Hi, God's Own Medicine here, Medic Maniac, and I'm doing a follow-up video to my Asking Questions video, um, and I'm using Pez again because obviously on my channel I've shown Pez to play, you know, how it actually plays, and I haven't falsified it as review sites did and said it was brilliant. I've shown how broken it is and how wrong it is and how unfit to be on shop shelves it is and how it doesn't do what it's supposed to do if the AI scores to cheat etc if it manipulates your passes if it cancels your inputs if it overrides them you know all that um, but apparently according to review sites and the review site that I read this was brilliant so I've done I've done a follow-up video um, and I'm going to read my emails that I sent to the review site that I read and the first one goes like this Hi GC, since you gave Anita Sarkeesian space and time on your site some time ago with her Tropes vs Women vids on her YouTube channel I thought you might like to give this video time and space too and then I put a link in to Troy Levitt's video um, Anita's pinhole a veteran game developer responds to um, and then I simply put many thanks, regards, and then obviously me. So that was the first email I sent them, and I sent that on the 14th uh, of this month. So I come out of that, got my laptop sitting on my knee, you see, so I sent emails. And I click the next one I sent them, which was on Tuesday at 9.30. Um, I sent this. Hi GC. So what did you think to Troy Levitt and his YouTube channel vids responding to Anita Sarkeesian's Tropes vs Women vids? Isn't it refreshing to have a veteran video game developer reasoning on this important topic? I'm sure it would make a great topic for discussion on your gaming site. After all, you did give time and space to Anita and her Tropes vs Women vids. I also wanted to ask your standpoint on review sites giving badly broken games glowing review scores of 9 out of 10. As a video game customer, I myself have bought games given glowing 9 out of 10 scores only to find that they should never have been on shop shelves in the first place. Games like Pez 2015, 16 and 17 and Forza Motorsport 6. In the case of Pez, I have videos on my YouTube channel showing how it actually plays and in the case of Forza 6 I've put together a vid talking about it with links to what's wrong with it in the info bar of the vid. Do you feel as video game reviewers that you are allowed to objectively critique a game or do you feel that the industry pressure video game reviewers and review sites so much that is, it is impossible to write a completely objective game review anymore. Do you feel that customers have a large selection of completely objective review sites to choose from to gain an accurate informed position before making a purchase? Do you feel review scores serve the customer or the industry? Do you feel review scores should be dropped completely? What do you feel about whitelists and companies like Nintendo and Konami? Do you find it increasingly hard to do your jobs? Do you feel that the industry needs an ombudsman to ensure a fair playing field and help the customers? Regards, and then of course me. So, those were the emails that I sent. Um, and I'm doing this video because I haven't seen them published. They haven't published my emails. They haven't responded to me um, and my emails via email. They haven't contacted me in any way to respond to that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist after watching my videos to work out that the games in question and the games I name were broken. Badly broken. Um, so much so that the games player couldn't do what the reviews said they could do. Play them properly. If you have a racing game 
and the object of your racing game is that you can um, put power into your cars to a certain class and that you can then compete globally via the leaderboards or via racing alongside them with other cars that are equally matched in that class then Forza 6 fails because when you've got glitched cars you can put more power into those cars in the same class and the field is uneven on the leaderboards which to this date have not been wiped by the way uh, and on the racetrack you know when you compete with others online it is not a fair playing field it does not do what it says it does on the tin at launch the game was broken so badly that the AI was so difficult even on the easiest difficulty level it was hardly beatable at all uh, I've linked that video uh, by randomhead787 in another video of mine um, that point about it has been patched but there are other points that the racing game should do as you know I like my lap times I have a few lap times uh, myself on Drive Club which are as I've said a repeat at the top of the leaderboard currently um, and if you've got a racing game where people can cut chunks of the track off um, and I've linked that vid in my vid talking about what's wrong with Forza 6 then your racing game doesn't do what it says it should but it, because it's not working properly and no way should that game be getting 9 out of 10 but it got 9 out of 10 because 9 out of 10 is a scoreline that ensures good sales at launch and I've linked um, event statuses vid showing how the industry works on that. There's a video that Troy Levitt has done about Gamergate and I'm going to recommend you visit Troy Levitt's um, site and give this Gamergate video a watch because in that he talks about the relationship between game publishers and reviewers how re publishers have invested money in their product you know in their game and invested in the developers to make their game and so they schmooze journal video game journals you know give them nice meals make sure that their experience when they first play their product is a positive one that the game journal feels good because that first play of their product by the game journo is an important one. The journos can make or break a product by a review. And so you get to see the importance of the relationship between the publisher and the game journo. Don't take my word for it. Troy Levitt's been a video game developer for over 20 years. Watch his video. Um, I recommend that you search information about this which is freely available now on the internet because my point is that Forza 6 seems to have got 9 out of 10 because of these such things and that Pez seems to have got 9 out of 10 because of these such things because the publisher gains from a 9 out of 10 score I said, and I've said, you know, often that I'm not attacking this particular website, this particular gaming site, individually. I'm attacking the industry. Because it's not just this gaming site. It's multiple gaming sites across the globe. Now, I did have my dictionary and I am going to read from my dictionary and if you have a dictionary at home I'd encourage you to get your dictionary and have a look and read at your dictionary and the word we're looking at that I'm looking at is fraud number one deliberate deception or cheating intended to gain an advantage number two an act of such deception three informal a person who acts in a false or deceitful way and then underneath it fraudulent adjective acting with intent to deceive to 
proceeding from fraud. Let's not beat around the bush here. Let's spell it out as it is. Any intended deception in order to gain financial advantage from misleading the public in review scores is fraud. Let's not beat around the bush here. This is criminal activity. This is serious crime. In my case, I bought an Xbox One. I've talked about this before. Hundreds of pounds wasted through deception and lying. Fraud is a crime. I'd encourage you to search the internet. I'd encourage you to look at different things. The other thing that I'd encourage you to have a look at, I, I came across a channel by uh, a chap called Joe, calls himself Joe Chip on YouTube. And he has a, a big video out there, um, amongst other fine videos, uh, just talking about gaming stuff. That talks about whitelists and Nintendo's whitelists and the controlling of YouTubers and the content that they show and they're allowed to show and the way that they're allowed to show it. Now I've ranted about YouTubers on my PES videos. I've ranted about the falsifying of, you know, um, showing a product and not talking about it objectively, properly objectively. Because YouTubers are obviously used by publishers, by, you know, companies to promote products now. The importance of game reviewers and journalists has become less, but it's still influential. And YouTubers are a way of using um, media, uh, using people to promote their products and put it in a light in which to influence others. Um, and and that that's happening out there. Um, it, I, I recommend Joe Chip's channel. I recommend that you watch this video about whitelists. Um, that you get clued up as to how the industry is working, what the industry is about, and basically, it's about playing us. It's about playing you and me. We want to play games. We want to play good games. And to play a game, sometimes, like in my case with the Xbox One, you've got to spend hundreds of pounds to do so. That's what it's about. It's about our cash. So get clued up. Those are my emails. Take care. Catch you later.